Look at the false redemption of Logan Paul and never ending right, grip uh... by friend of the motherfucking show, Jobbery. Jobbery came out with a 45 minute docuseries on Logan Paul never actually redeeming himself. I have How's to pee going? really quickly. I'll yeah, be back. We just want to make video videos and put them on YouTube. Sometimes these videos might be like really stupid. Stupid. I have hiccups. Sorry. What well, we have here today is a blowhorn. But uh, we got good news, guys. We're coming back. Yeah! If you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Yo In March 2017, one of Vine's most notorious superstars greeted a crowd of screaming children from atop his million dollar apartment. I'm gonna set this up, I wanna get you guys some socks! Yeah. But he didn't plan to just give the kids free socks. Unbeknownst to his fans, Logan Paul had devised a plan to prank his most loyal supporters into thinking their favorite influencer just got assassinated in front of them. Yeah, I'm not making this up. Explaining at the beginning of the vlog how he wanted Wait, that sounds kind of cool. Oh my god, what the fuck? Why is I know this man? This is this is Austin Mills. I play basketball with him. To mess with his fans Why is he waiting there? across the street, Logan clarifies the Low Gang is about to witness his murder. The 14-minute video features Logan and his band of cronies buying a $70 prop shotgun and setting up a fake blood sprayer behind a giant window where all his fans can get a clear. Okay, this is kind of fucking I mean, it's like real fucked up. It's real fucked up, but also at the same time, it's like kind of funny. <laughs> Am I crazy? Don't yell at me, but like, <laughs> like if they weren't kids, if he didn't do this to like children, it'd be pretty fucking sick. Your view of what they think are Logan Paul's final moments. Yeah, someone in the chat said this correctly, but if if Jerma had done this, like you would fucking eat it up. After publishing an Instagram story where he says there's a maniac in his building, Logan can be seen thinking up all the other ways to make the stunt seem as real as possible. The murder is real. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hold my fake vlog camera so they think I'm just vlogging them instead of like waving and stuff. Let's get some some Maverick socks for the low gangsters. Yeah! Oh, as he steps toward the window, vlog camera in hand, a masked man brandishing the shotgun approaches Logan from behind before shooting him in the back point blank. Blood splatters all over Logan and the window as our man slumps against the glass and slides to the floor. At Yo, that's awesome! His friend props him up one last time, making sure the kids can get a good look at their hero's bloodied corpse. Streaks of confusion and disbelief ripple across the crowd of pre what the fuck? Also, crowd of preteens, and then there's a whole ass adult, okay? This dude played basketball for Baylor, dog. What the fuck's he doing in this video? He walked on to Baylor. I am, oh my god, that's hilarious. Teens, unable to process what they just saw before Logan gets back up to address the audience once more. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, I'm okay! <laughs> I think it's like a mix of like yes and no. He assures them he's fine and that he's on his way to meet them across the street after he washes off all the fake blood. After all, it was just a prank, right? <laughs> he said W murder. Oh my God. Oh, what a horrific pause. Oh, jeez, um, Lord mercy. That is, oh, that's more traumatizing to the kids than anything else, really. What the fuck? You see this shit as a child, you're like, oh, hell no. Hell no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Eustace bag looking motherfucker. Oh, no, brother. That is. Woo, woo. Lucas Timothy. God damn, dude. God damn.
Go to Turkey, go to Turkey, go to Turkey, go to Turkey, go to Turkey. For your judgment to be so clouded by the chase for fame and riches that you would fake your own violent death in front of the ones who love and support your content the most, you'd need to be a special type of deranged. You'd need to be one of the Paul brothers, men who have spent their entire lives chasing numbers on a screen to add to an infinite pool of wealth. Just this video alone garnered Logan a grand 23 million views before he inevitably took it down when it comes to the paul's brand yeah honestly back then youtube was insane i mean he literally filmed the dead body at the suicide forest like youtube was so psychotic people i mean you all half of you grew up on it and like don't even realize how fucking devastating that shit was but like it was this it was this like rapist prank youtubers okay this kind of shit uh, fucking racist prank YouTubers, sometimes rapist and racist prank YouTubers, okay? And then fucking just straight, just mainlining, psychotic, right-wing propaganda, like just straight up Richard Spencer shit is everything and ever since that fateful day in a Japanese forest you could say Logan has made it his mission to appear as changed as possible on the surface but what happens when you peer a little deeper into the void do you find a truly changed man or just the same soulless clout goblin who would abandon all morals for a crumb of attention I'm assuming you know the answer Logan Paul was caught with his pants down exposed for one of the largest scams ever run by an infant Influencer. Join me in documenting a multi-million dollar grifter that never seems to change no matter how much he wants us to think he has. It just seems to me like he's always looking for the next quick buck at the expense of his audience. Pretty much exemplary. No clickbait, no nothing. Logan Paul is just not to be trusted, period. In the ultimate prank on humanity, Logan Alexander Paul was born on April Fool's 1995 in Westlake, Ohio. Raised by Pamela- Okay, that's it. That's- you got it four minutes in. You already ended the man, okay? There you go. That's, that explains literally everything. He made it out of Ohio. It's just like, there is straight up nothing you need to explain further other than that. And Gregory Paul, alongside his younger brother Jake, who you may or may not uh, potentially have possibly heard of. We've done a lot of dumb things. This is the dumbest thing we've ever done. As much as I'd love to tear into both these goofballs, I only have enough patience to cover one scam artist at a time, so I'll have to pace myself. Growing up outside of Cleveland, Logan's outgoing personality was bound to land him in front of a camera at some point. By 10 years old, he had already picked up a hobby of photography, <laughs> which evolved that. into making Smash. videos in his early teens. Uploading archaic vlogs of their sports teams to YouTube in the very early days of the site. But nothing truly caught the attention of family and friends until they began shooting funny little sketches and pranks. We are going to test it out right now. It's pretty loud. These early videos were posted to a couple joint channels the boys shared by the names of Zoosh and L Dog and J Slice, which you can still find remnants of all these years later. For the most part, these videos consisted of a preteen Logan filming whatever wacky concept popped into his still developing brain. Looking back, it's not hard to see Logan's personality shaping into the one we know today. Can I have an order of some? <laughs> with, uh... I'm sorry, what was that? An order of some. Okay. Can I have... How many of those would you like? Three. Three of a dumb one? What? What was that again? S an order of... <laughs> Wait, I'm not done though. Okay. C can I have a drink, um, the... The, um... <laughs> What's that called again? After a couple years of finding his footing, Logan launched a solo channel, the official Logan Paul, in 2013 to showcase the six second clips he had been posting to- Wait, Logan Paul only has 5 million subs? That's kind of crazy. I would have thought he had like 20, right? Vine the past several months. That was a close one. Reaching over 40 million active users by August 2013, the potential to make a name for yourself with just a six second snippet of your life was unprecedented. And such an ultra short- Oh, he has 23 million? Oh, okay, early, back in the day he had five. ...format demanded the exact type of irreverent, fast-paced humor Logan and his brother had been unknowingly practicing for years. As soon as the app launched, the two made it a competition to see who could gain the most followers, prompting Logan to join a contest hosted by Virgin 
and mobile. Using their hashtag happy accidents, Logan was able to expand his Vine following exponentially, taking him from around 100 followers at the beginning of the summer to 1 million by September. Just like that, videos of himself bothering employees at Kroger and sniffing random women in public had placed him among the top creators on the app. I won't subject you to too much of his Vine since most of it's just <laughs> but he fully embraced the immature, disrespectful man-child persona from the start. Probably because he is an immature, disrespectful man-child. Um, attention ladies on the plane, my name is Logan Paul. I'm single and ready to mingle. I'm up near the cockpit in case anyone- <laughs> But it wasn't until a compilation of his most popular vines reached 4 million views the first week it was posted to YouTube that Logan told his school newspaper that he saw potential for himself in the entertainment world. He never stayed past his freshman year at Ohio University for a variety of reasons, partly having to do with his new popularity giving him the chance to work with a number of mainstream brands. Shortly after dropping out of college, Logan could be seen doing promo for Just Dance, Dunkin' Donuts, Hanes, and many other companies who were more than willing to cut him a generous check. Even making it onto an episode of Law and Order SVU, bizarrely enough. What the fuck? Hey, drop that gun. Okay, okay. Got it. By the mid 20s, <laughs> his clout was That's awesome. exploding. For better or for worse, people everywhere were talking about Logan's content. His army of low gangsters, as he called them, paved the way for his account to hit 9.4 million followers by late 2016. Even his pet Maverick the Parrot had a sizable Instagram account. Logan was proving even back then that if you had the numbers, you had leverage. Everything was downstream of getting as many Vine loops as possible until the game changed. What's up, Internet? My name is Logan Paul, and I am reporting live from Vine Street. Today, we are going around asking some of Vine's biggest creators how they feel about their platform being killed off like a chicken at McDonald's. Let's go! If you ask me, plenty of missteps factored into Vine's inevitable death. But the biggest of all was that nobody was getting paid. Seriously, you could be getting tens of millions of views a month and never see a single penny. So when the biggest Viners... Yeah, but so is TikTok, and it was just brand deals. Vine was too good and too early. That's it. Vine's only problem was that it was a successful platform before people uh, truly understood the the uh, ingenuity of of literal fucking short bursts of content that keeps you on the uh, keeps you on the platform itself. Azan, did you ever make a Vine? I never had a Vine. Uh, I never had a Vine account and I never made a Vine, a singular Vine. Realized they could just take their massive audiences elsewhere? Vine's fate was sealed. They had competition with YouTube AdSense, but were evidently not willing to compete. Without a sustainable business model that worked for their creators, Vine had no choice but to suspend all services on January 17th, 2017. By that point, plenty of massive ex-Viners were already well on their way to becoming some of the biggest accounts on Instagram and at fastest growing channels on YouTube. One of the most notable, of course, being What is up, people of the internet? My name is Logan Paul and welcome to my vlog channel. That's right, I'm vlogging now. You get to see more of me. <laughs> Sick, right? <laughs> Logan kicked off his vlogging career on September 12th, 2016, with a trip to the music festival Burning Man. The 16-minute two-part series essentially laid the groundwork for what fans could come to expect for Logan's new channel. Daily uploads consisting of whatever new adventure Logan was embarking upon that day. His early vlogs featured appearances from other top creators and his lovely, very likable family. Man, what's up with you? Jake, Jake Drake? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm... And uh, I'm dread. Even a few A-list celebrities made some cameos here and there. Don't, Don't do that. All, all, Don't, that all. What? Bro, Kevin Hart was on a Logan Paul vo uh, video? Oh. That's... Even dude, that is... Wow. That, that shit is buried, brother. I, I had no... What the fuck? Yeah, their dad's a bit of a freak. I think he like kissed the girl that was like 17 or something, right? And a few A-list celebrities made some cameos here and there. Don't, don't do that. Oh, 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 no, I don't think get, so, bro. At this point, Logan was also tapped to star as the main character in the YouTube Red original movie, The Thinning, a science fiction teen dystopian huh. drama that I'm sure is great. You couldn't pay me to watch it, but it sure as shit can't be as bad as Logan's solo movie. Don't be so bright. Bro, for, for context, I need people to understand, this is pre-adpocalypse at this point, I believe. 
And YouTubers that were this famous pre-adpocalypse made hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? Like, it was literally... Like, Twitch is having its gold rush or had its gold rush, I think, moment in a similar vein. And the number of money, the, the number of dollars that Twitch uh, streamers made literally pales in comparison. Like, it's, it's like nothing, okay? Nothing. Twitch has already peaked. It's already fucking... You know, it, it it's already in decline as far as like uh, permanent growth and shit like that. But the bag that like PewDiePie and and you know others of that sort, the bags that they fucking got were literally meteoric. Okay, they did not make that much money. I worked at a major network and had access to all their financial data. Maybe twenty million max. No, I don't believe that. I think all of the YouTubers that were like literally banging at that point you're talking about adsense money it's not just adsense remember adpocalypse took away a lot of the ad revenue but also no it wasn't 20 million it was more than that he's wrong 20 million is a lot 20 million is a lot but you're wrong it was more than 20 million okay it's 20 million back then maybe but even more than that in my opinion uh but we're not talking just adsense bro he just said logan paul is a vine star as a Vine star, we're getting Dunkin' Donuts and Pepsi deals. Okay? PewDiePie is a hundred millionaire. Lamau, no shot. You think PewDiePie is not worth a hundred mil? You're crazy. This is before we talk about the fucking... This is before we talk about the merchandise. There's... Dude, dude, dude. We're talking merchandising. We're talking ad revenue that was like big dollars on top of that. We're talking fucking literal fat brand deals. Let's see what PewDiePie's uh, actual net worth is now. Let's see. I mean, none of this is going to be real, obviously, but yeah, it says it's around 40 million. No, I don't believe that. I think they just say that every fucking, for every content creator, there's like, oh, it's probably 40 million. <sighs> I worked for a company that wanted to hire him and his fee for a 10 minute video was 750K. Yeah. I don't think people get how much these guys were justifying like uh, in, in contracts. My name is Penis. As per usual with daily vlogging, Logan was constantly needing to up the stakes to keep his audience watching, which for the most part were actual babies. If you watch just a couple seconds of any of these vlogs, you can tell Logan deliberately geared his content towards a much younger demographic. From the editing to the way he spoke, the colors, the titles. I mean, this stuff must have been crack for middle schoolers, which makes it only slightly awkward when you have videos like my boy hooked up with my mom. <laughs> I can barely said out straight face. Oh, you called? Yes, I did. Ready? Yes. But first, a word from our beautiful sponsor, Raycon. Raycon provides premium... He put that hooked up, my boy hooked up with my mom shit, right? As a Raycon ad too. I see what he's doing. Subtle. Um... The health, the health thing alone was like, bro, I drove myself which to also has, Which also has something called a purple ceiling where they expect creators to max out views, burn out, stream less, and then leave. YouTube, on the other hand, had actively built up its creators until the adpocalypse. Wait, really? I mean, that actually makes a lot of sense if you look at, like, all the OGs on the platform. Uh, and with the exception of myself and, like, XQC, I would say, many of the top content creators have literally consistently uh, lowered their... Um, consistently lowered their hours of streaming I, and summit too i think summit is another one who like literally has not stopped and is just fucking going but yeah i mean think about it which is understandable we're not talking about popping off we're not talking about popping off we're, we're talking about hours streamed of course Shaw pops off pewdiepie is not worth 100 million i mean this reddit uh, i can't believe i'm going to reddit for this but like it does make sense PewDiePie net worth, according to Google, is 30 to 50 million. His net worth, according to Bing, is 40 million. His monthly earnings are uh, upwards 406,000. His yearly earnings are upwards 4.8 million, according to Social Blade. And Social Blade yearly earnings are like insanely fucking fast, but it's like uh, usually probably closer to the higher uh, side. Monthly earnings are, uh, according to Knox Influencer, his yearly earnings are around 800,000. Uh, top two. 
Uh, most viewed videos, Bitch Lasagna made $4 million. Congratulations, made $2.8 million, $2.9 million, which doesn't make sense. How the fuck is that even possible? Uh, in, totaling at 93. Uh, horse for the purple ceiling. How Twitch lost his way. I never thought about it like that, but it definitely is like Twitch does lend itself a lot. Twitch does lend itself a lot to uh, burnout. It's not easy to maintain a delicate... Uh, it's not easy to maintain that delicate balance. Like, the fact that... Um, the fact that I have, like, a social life outside of streaming and the fact that I can, like, work out and shit uh, outside of streaming is, is uh, wild. Most people don't do that. Yo, by the way, the old CEO Emmett left the company, which made the new CEO do the layoffs a couple days later. What a bitch move. Yeah, that was like pretty fucked. I remember PewDiePie was making more than 50 million a year. Back in the day, he responded to a video to a comment to the ass if he made around that. And he said something like, that's cute. And 2014, I don't know if that was the exact year, but was a good year. You're able to do that because you neglect those gaming frogs. If I could easily game and maintain a similar audience... If I could easily game and maintain a similar audience, I would probably do 12, 13, 14 hours. It's pro it'd be worse for me. It would ruin my life, probably. I would never stop. I'd be like fucking full-blown XUC shit. Like once a, once a month, I was sick. He came over to, uh, to do a writing session with me, mm. and I knew he was sick. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, yo, you should be like just relaxing. And I'll never forget, he's recording, and his nose just starts pouring blood. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And he literally just goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Wipes it, goes right back into it like nothing just happened. And I was like, yo, you're sick. Bro, I would get damn nosebleeds. I would throw up. Fucking my health suffered immensely. Logan was driving himself to literal sickness over content that included riding a model like a bike during a dehumanizing music video shoot that made the woman reportedly feel like her legs were about to give out. Or at the time he and famous good guy Sam Pepper took to the streets and started lassoing women on camera, only letting them go if they gave them a kiss. Or what about the time? Actually, sorry, I'm, I'm getting. Bro, that shit is, like, wild. They were just doing, like, sexual assault as a prank. Like, that was... YouTube was insane, dude. How the fuck did that shit... I think that's why I'm so fucking understanding of, like, content creators fucking up. Because I'm just old. And I come from a very different era. Right? Where, like, what I saw... What I saw when I was, like, also a young up-and-coming content creator trying to fucking talk about, like progressive politics on the least habitable space you could possibly do that in i just saw so much unhinged insane shit not to get all like back in my day but like like the internet grew up in many ways very quickly like what you are seeing on kick with what aiden ross is doing and shit was incredibly commonplace on youtube like it was just on on the forefront of youtube okay like what aiden ross doing on kick is like seen as like a like a weird thing people are like yo that guy's a weirdo right like what happened like he's doing like weird ass shit that was super normal on youtube like main page shit and people will say old twitch is like that i was not on twitch so i don't know but i have heard that that was how old twitch was like as well yeah Lowest common denominator outrage content? Yeah, he had it myself. One of his more popular videos to gain attention at this time was when he fixed his color blindness by throwing on a pair of special color correcting lenses and staring into the sun. <sighs> okay, I'm about to put on these glasses uh, that are gonna cure my color blindness for the first time in my life. Let's see what Hassan Abi was doing in 2017 while Logan Paul was popping off. Okay, shut the fuck up. Oh my God, I'm wearing the same jacket. And the same glasses. I literally look better now. Oh my God, I look better now. It's a glow up. Bazinga. Most consistent human. Even my fucking fits have remained consistent. That's not true. I've definitely... Definitely stop wearing certain bits. 
I saw it five years younger than you, but we still recognize it as sexual assault. How's the hairline, though? I'm sorry that was mean. Dude, what do you mean? My hairline has remained literally the fucking same. And that's actually shouts out the modern medicine. Thank you for... <laughs> thank you for helping. Did you change buttons? Oh, actually, it's not the same jacket. It's a different jacket. But it's still a fucking denim jacket, I guess. Yeah. Blow up? Yeah, dude, money has that effect. True. I mean, that definitely plays a role. I was I had more free time to work out back then than I do now. But I think my diet I think my diet is better. It used to have point. Now the hairline is straight. <laughs> what was your salary like at the Young Turks? It was fucking not great for a California. I think my last year was like 65 grand. And I was generating millions of views for them. So not great. Why are you bat chesting me? Damn, 2016 Hassan can get it. 2023 Hassan is getting told not tonight. I have a headache. Wait, why? I think I look better now. I mean, do people really change in appearance that much from 31 to 37 years old? Fuck you, bitch. I'm 31 now. And I was what? This was like six, seven years ago. This was actually seven years ago, not six. Okay. You looked great for your 30s in that picture. Shut up. With such a clearly fake reaction coupled with the cliche sad music in the background, the video was picked apart by commentary channels and laughed at by basically everyone on YouTube. I became very emotional after watching that video. I went on Social Blade uh -huh. and I was moved. It felt like seeing colors for the first time on Social Blade. Right. The primary color being green. <sighs> it's wild to think that like, I mean, both of these dudes have have dramatically changed their worldviews over that period of time, too, I think. <laughs> but it wasn't for another year that Logan finally admitted to embellishing things. <laughs> some, some, dude just, named, some dude named H3 was yeah. just roasting. And I was new to YouTube, right? Some dude named H3? Yeah, bro, you don't know who fucking Ethan Klein is? Like, come on, brother. Oh, God. Okay, dude. I didn't know anything. Yeah. I was just a Vine kid. And so we made this colorblind video, which I, I, I've said this before. I am colorblind, but the video was incredibly <laughs> embellished. <laughs> so I put on these glasses. Bro, no change. Uh, like, <laughs> no I change. didn't know that. Like this, I didn't know the sky that. Was no, zero. And I had a moment in my mind. I was like, we're at the Getty Museum. I, ha I, I, what do I just, I have to fake this. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, all right, I put my acting chops to work. The music comes the in. Music the music comes in. You're a motherfucker. I'd have made it yeah. the most melodramatic thing ever. <laughs> While he is actually colorblind, unable to see green and red color pigments, the glasses did nothing. And his reaction was entirely hyped up for the tens of millions of views he got. Because Logan... Oh, he's saying back then he didn't know, but still Ethan was more popular back then? Yeah, Ethan was literally more popular back then. Come on, dog. Come on. He didn't care if people knew it was fake. He didn't care if people made fun of it. Logan cared about the hundreds of thousands. Brother, he had 22 million views. Ethan and, uh, and iDubs on that video had 22 million views, okay? of dollars that came from having such a viral moment captured on tape. He relished in the articles it generated, the debate it sparked. Logan at this time wasn't setting out to be some saint always true to his word. He was an actor concerned with becoming the biggest entertainer in the world. And he was fine with making a few critics mad in the process. It didn't matter if he were liked, just as long as he was being talked about, and most importantly, making money. And in order to do both of those things effectively he decided to be logan paul's editor has a youtube channel where he talks very seriously about editing and i can't watch it without laughing because i know he's talking about editing this to be honest like i i think like editing is still editing you know what i mean even if it's shit he's making logan paul watchable so be a jackass oh what the oh! you know oh, oh what the I want to thank you for inventing the theory of relativity. Hey, I'm Marilla, Ella, Ella, A, 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 mi amigo, arigato, konnichiwa. Why? 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 Why?
look, no, dude, we are 9,000 subscribers away from hitting 10 million subscribers in one year of vlogging. Not even, in 340 days. The year he crossed 10 million subscribers was also the same year diss tracks were taking over the platform. Thanks in part to his little brother Jake bursting onto the scene, Logan was making more money than ever before with their fake beef, an ear piercing diss track on Santa Claus, and a new series of travel vlogs he named Adventures in Tokyo. You know where I'm going with this. Deciding to take a trip to Japan in late 2017, Logan and his friends were determined to use their vacation to a Now that I've been to Japan, what this piece of shit did in Japan is so, is so fucked up, okay? It's even more fucked up. He, he tarnished a, a, a beautiful nation, okay? Just even more unforgivable. Asia as a gold mine of new content. And none of it has aged well. Thanks for letting me touch your dog. Okay. <laughs> Tokyo! Tokyo! In Japan, Logan made sure to kick his annoying frat boy persona into high gear, being obnoxious in traditional Japanese clothing because it's funny or something. How far can we take this? In the video Kicked Out of Japan, Logan can be seen running, screaming through a market before washing his hands with holy water from a temple on account of holy water being for people who are real pieces of shit in life. No idea what that's supposed to mean. That's okay. My spirit be good. Just for if you're a real piece of shit in life. So if you look behind me, this is where you throw coins into the well. You make I wish for health, uh, happiness, and hella bitches. Or maybe you want to watch We Fought in the Middle of Tokyo, where Logan makes a mockery of martial arts in the middle of the street as people are trying to get to work, jumping out and scaring people at low. I mean, some of that stuff is like not. It, it, God, I can't like. I can't unshake my content skull. Like, every step of the way, I feel like Logan Paul, if he didn't push it to the next fucking level by doing, like, unimaginably cruel and fucked up shit, would have been still a majorly successful content creator without any of the fucking controversy. Like, he always had to just, like, go up to the fucking limit and then way past it. You know what I mean? Right now, you're getting mad at me and saying, nah, fuck you, Hassan, blah, blah, blah. But, like, if if he hadn't, like, if he just did, like, the martial arts thing, right? Like, that's not, you know, whatever. That's fucking, have you, I'm telling you, people take photos in, in Shibuya all the fucking time. People shoot content in Shibuya all the fucking time. Yeah, it's a little annoying, but, like, it's nothing that you would write home about. You would not, like, you would not lose your fucking mind. But the energy that you have for what he did here is literally motivated entirely by what he did that was so unimaginably ex uh, uh, unimaginably inappropriate. Like, dehumanizing, awful, like, just completely fucked up, which is the, the Suicide Forest stuff. If he was just, like, running around and yelling, that's still fucked up, okay? If he was running around and yelling in the marketplaces, like, washing his hands with holy water, all that stuff's fucked up. He shouldn't do any of that. But, like, that's pushing the boundaries. That's pushing the boundaries beyond what is acceptable. But if he, like, limited himself a little bit, if he just limited himself a little bit, he would have literally been just as successful and he wouldn't have been as uh, controversial. The temple shit's fucked up, bro. No, 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 I know. I know. I know. All of that stuff is disrespectful and fucked up. I'm, I'm saying those are in the unacceptable category. But, like, him fighting in the streets of Tokyo or whatever... Him fighting the streets of Tokyo is not like it's just you mean if he wasn't him at all just as successful no I think he would have been if he never did those NFT scam shit he would be fine right now he sort of redeemed himself publicly and had a lot of things going well for him well I think Jobbery is going to change our minds on that that's why we're watching this putting video. dogs by hiding in the back of their trucks then there's real life Pokemon Go in Tokyo catching strangers where instead of summarizing what happens I'll, I'll just show you ah! Ah! Get up. <laughs> oh, you've been caught. Wake up, we got trouble the cars uh, and merch to sell. Toyota, I choose you. No, 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 no. Yeah, as if laying in front of cars and running around town waving dead fish in people's faces wasn't enough, we haven't even gotten to the paramount moment of the trip. A very notable installment of the Logan Paul Japanese saga uploaded on December 31st, 2017.
Now, I remember the day this video came out, and I actually watched it over on his channel before it got taken down. The video was not only live for over 24 hours, but even trended on the main trending tab before anyone really asked any questions. Which means the millions of kids within Logan Paul's audience at the time didn't think it was bad to film a dead person. But once the news trickled outside of his core fan base, it was- Dylan O'Brien fucked them? Oh, dude. God damn. Still a goaded poster, by the way. Doesn't he post a lot? It's like funny over. shit? Logan was met with some of the most severe backlash I think I've ever seen towards one specific YouTuber at once. Which, for good reason, obviously. Yeah. This guy was getting bodied. It is literally one of the most deserved pieces of backlash that anyone's ever gotten for any particular kind of content. Like, like Aaron Paul tweeted at him. How dare you? You disgust me. I can't believe that so many young people look up to you. So sad. Hopefully this latest video woke them up. You are pure trash, plain and simple. Suicide is not a joke. Go rot in hell. And then he, and then he signed it. AP. By Jesse Pinkman and the Queen of Winterfell, for God's sake. That's how bad this was. Even my parents learned the name Logan Paul thanks to an SNL skit. Already auditioning candidates. Got some prospects. Logan Paul. <laughs> As expected, the entire YouTube community took up arms against the guy they finally had a good excuse to hate. I don't think there was a single person defending Logan Paul over the age of six, but that didn't stop him from putting out one of the worst notes out Bro, he literally went on Good Morning America to apologize. That was so crazy. What a fucking era, dude. What a fucking era. That was, yeah, someone in the chat said that was before he became the main character on Twitter before Twitter had that, like, as a, as a culture. Love that. Yeah, the notepad apology. Apologies I've ever read to this day. Dear internet, I didn't do it for views. I get views. I did it because I thought I could make a positive ripple on the internet. I've made a 50 <laughs> TV I show about every this. single day for the past 460 <laughs> plus days. I love everyone. I believe in people. Peace. <laughs> Hashtag Logan for life. Somehow that piece of shit got over 100,000 likes, but regular <laughs> people still weren't buying it. That's a hard thing to do is even like hard talking about it right now with you because up until that point in my life, I, I, it was really only wins. It was only success. It was only consistent growth. Logan's second apology, this time in the form of a video, remains one of the most disliked YouTube videos to date. Not necessarily because of what he said, as this time he actually apologized to the individuals he should have mentioned in his previous statement, but more so how it all came across. Despite his best efforts, people still didn't believe his sincerity, and the apology kind of became a meme after that. I mean, whether he was genuine or not, it still came across like a hostage video. I made a severe lapse in judgment. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a banger, a banger, dude. Actually a banger. There is not, dude, 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 iconic. He is, God, he's so, oh God, it's so good. It's so fucking good. It's so good we forgot about it, like, but it's still a fucking classic. The moment that you see it, it's just like, it lights up in your mind in the same way. Thing was you even will never see something that, say something that iconic. I think my certified hood classic moment is, you know, what America deserved, okay? Let's, uh, that's going to be, that, that's probably going to just stay there monetized for a bit. I mean, how can you blame someone for not buying this video? He kept it short though, and at the very least told his fans to stop defending him. After all, he wasn't losing subs, he was gaining them. The negative press didn't seem to hurt him too bad. Not even YouTube did much to punish him. All they did was cancel, I, I mean postpone, his next movie and remove him from the preferred partners program, which I didn't even know was a thing until making this video. Apparently he was pulling in so many views that YouTube allowed him to get paid more money than the rest of us by being a preferred yeah by the way it, it, yeah, i know that like this is such a fucking played out thing to mention but is there better proof that cancel culture is just fucking fake than logan paul still one of the like largest content creators on the fucking planet i mean he filmed a person who committed suicide and fucking posted it louis ck you think louis ck got canceled 
Brother Louis C.K. won a Grammy like last year. He's perform. Louis C.K. almost performed in Ukraine when when uh, uh, Kiev was being fucking invaded. <laughs> Oh, that's what I mean. He was canceled, but really wasn't. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. My bad. I didn't even understand. I thought you were trying to make a point that he was canceled or something. Partner. But when shit hit the fan, they kicked him back down to just regular partner. Google preferred dropped you from their service. Yeah. Do you think that that was, was fair of them to do? I understand that they needed to take a stance. And while I don't necessarily maybe agree with it, mm -hmm. I do respect it. Gee, how is he gonna make it by without all that extra money, I wonder? The only good thing to come out of this whole disaster was his next video, where he did make an attempt to at least give the spotlight to people with a closer connection to the subject. It, at the very least, exposed a more positive and impactful message to millions of people. And I have to give credit where credit is due. But judging by his next upload 10 days later, it didn't seem like he really learned much. After the disgraced YouTuber has been spotted across the country, Hiding his face from paparazzi and seen swallowing his tears on social media like a little baby back. Yo, hold up, disgrace. What you mean disgrace, boy? I took a break. Besides, I'm still lit as fuck. What other YouTuber you know can take a three week break and still gain a million subscribers, boy? It still felt like a joke to him. Also, it did not help that he made headlines again for tasering a rat corpse not even a month after the forest incident. Like, why was he even doing this? I, he even made fun of his reputation as a controversial YouTuber in a bizarre Fox News interview. Just so you know, I, I am an ex controversial YouTuber. That's Correct. no longer, yeah, it's no longer me. We I kinda, know that. If I'm being quite honest with you, uh, I, I'm the fastest YouTuber. I'm the fastest as entertainer on the planet. I could You're be about running. running. I could be the quickest man on the planet. You, you I'm everywhere, Instagram. baby. I'm ever yeah, <laughs> no, I'm everywhere. And I'm nowhere. I'm like a ghost. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm betting $100,000 that I'm the fastest man on the planet. I'm the fastest man on the planet. Yeah, but I will say my expenses just surpassed my income for the first time ever. I just sat with my financial manager. He mm -hmm. told me that. Like, I'm, I'm definitely going downhill from Did here. Did that make you nervous? Yeah, absolutely. I'm terrified. I think it's the, the beginning of the end. I, I'm uncomfortable with myself, you know? Come on. I also have pink eye. It's not <laughs> contagious. But talk no, to me about- No, it is. About... It's a, there's a two week incubation period. Uh, I'm okay, so, so sorry. But... Uh, but yeah. He just wasn't mature enough to take anything seriously. And okay, that part was kind of funny. I, I can't, damn it. I mean, that, that, I mean, I guess that's why he's like successful despite uh, all of the, come on, bro. He's trolling Fox business like, the, the juxtaposition of, like, having a fucking asshat like him. Don't say Logan Paul defender. No. Having an asshat like him is just, like, uh, on, a, on such an uh, uptight, stupid fucking uh, platform like uh, uh, Fox Business is, of course, going to create shit like that. And it would be a while before he could truly rebuild his reputation in a way that mattered. But he sure wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. I'm sure you've heard, the fight has been confirmed, the contract has been signed. August 25th, London, I am officially fighting KSI. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's is good. it gonna be a fight though? No, oh, no, shots no, fired! No, no, no. I'm not gonna underestimate the kid, right? I'm taking it very, very, very... <laughs> Influencer boxing had been heating up since fall 2017, escalating when Joe Weller was beat by fellow British personality KSI in a highly publicized match in February 2018. In a post-fight interview streamed live to over 20 million people, KSI made the following call-out. Jake Paul, Logan Paul, any of the Pauls, I don't care. Which which came as no surprise given how Logan and by extension Jake had become the most hated people, not just in America, but on the entire internet. Jake was put on the undercard to fight KSI's- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I think Logan Paul's any short of reputation because of KSI. Legitimately without KSI, Logan would not have gained shit back as fast as he did. KSI saved his career 100%, I think so too. KSI has been, for, as far as I understand, I'm sure he's a YouTuber, so there's plenty of fucking awful things that he's done too, every YouTuber has, but- um, by, by the, like, by the metric of YouTubers, if you're, like, uh, measuring him towards, like, in comparison to, like, other YouTubers, he is, uh, relatively unproblematic, I think, or at least the outlook is that maybe because he's from, from England, uh, that they don't see him as, like, a problematic content creator, and he had a very good, um, he... 
guys, stop writing shit, uh, you know, uh, about... He had a rape face controversy, but he changed a lot. Yeah, I'm just... I'm stating that the Sidemen, KSI, maybe because they're on uh, uh, the English side of YouTube, okay, um, have been able to stay away from, like, Logan Paul levels of controversy, which, you know, at the time was very fucking commonplace. We're talking about YouTubers that went to jail and shit. Like, you're, you're crazy. We Brits aren't as unhinged or unscrupulous as you Yanks. Yeah, really? Talk about Sam Pepper for a second. Fuck you mean, bro. No, th there were plenty of fucking awful... There were plenty of awful uh, British content creators as well, but they came to America. His younger brother, Deji, while Logan stepped up to accept KSI's challenge. As we know from prior instances, Logan considers all press good press, and by then, his reputation was at its lowest point ever. He could certainly stand to benefit from some media attention that wasn't just, hey, remember that vlog that guy did? He just said, yeah, rape face, but nothing seriously. No, what I stated was like, these guys were all doing fucking awful shit, okay? They were doing awful, awful, awful shit for the most part. And I'm talking about why uh, KSI is not seen as like a a problematic content creator because like it didn't um like that was not seen as uh as as big as a fuck up by the broader internet audience. Uh not only that, but I know I'm pretty sure he's not like uh he has grown a lot as a person, not only as a content creator since then anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm talking relative to other content creators of similar sizes at the time. Yeah. Regardless, everyone on the planet anticipated seeing these two dudes completely knocked on their heads. Except Jake, of course, beat Deji, and Logan's match went to a completely underwhelming tie, which turned into a rematch the next year where we finally got that satisfying ending. The event kicked off a trend of influencer fighting that's both revived boxing and generated a fuck ton of money. But most importantly, it's helped keep Logan in the public eye. He didn't just fade into the woodwork, he was on everyone's screens. Again. From there, he continued pumping out vlogs as his channel surpassed twin real chats serious question he said did you talk about the shooting i just got here what do you think i mean just like just take a breather and just think for a moment do you think i talked about the shooting that happened today what do you think we're seven hours and 51 minutes into the broadcast or you think i ignored it the the biggest news story of the day you think i talked about it I'm gonna go pee. 20 million Think about subscribers. It. He made sure to effectively use the attention he was already getting to his advantage, culminating with the launch of his popular weekly podcast, Impulsive. Which is a pretty smart name, I'd say. Logan Paul sought to usher in a newer, more subdued side of his personality. From the beginning, the show was always meant to be a deviation from his high-energy, child-guided vlogs and sought to capitalize on an older demographic capable of listening to more nuanced, multifaceted discussions. <laughs> But joking aside, not everything on this show was blatantly unwatchable. Over the course of hundreds of episodes and an impressively wide ensemble of guests, Logan did occasionally demonstrate some actual depth and social awareness that we hadn't previously seen from him. We are all incredibly unaware of how deeply intertwined the ugly roots of racism have embedded themselves in the foundation of this country. 13th Amendment. There is a criminality clause conveniently nestled in that amendment that says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States. I will not be a part of a generation that is written on the wrong side of history, and I will not stand by as my fellow humans are brutally and unjustifiably murdered at the hand of the state or any oppressor. This was pretty crazy. I mean, this was, this was pretty wild. He's just reading from a script. Yeah, he was, I mean, undeniably, he just like popped the fuck off on this. He did. Woken Paul, chat GPT wrote that. Yeah, listen up, Asan, you might learn something. Yeah, I just... But this was also like the same era where every TikToker was like putting up the BLM fist on their fucking profiles and shit. So it was like demonstrably fashionable to do so. I took all of the support as a positive overall because I thought it was a good thing overall. You know what I mean? Like, great. It means that it's like fashionable to advocate for you know, equal rights. But honestly, it was, you know, maybe it was not. 
Maybe it didn't really yield any outcomes that were otherwise positive. Yeah. To be completely honest, this podcast existing did way more for Logan's redemption arc than any other content he put out post Japan. I will always love him, but I don't always like him. He's my brother, he's my family, he's my blood. Sometimes I do not understand why he does the things he does, as I'm sure it's, he feels the same way about me from time to time. The boxing match definitely helped, but without this podcast, I don't think we would have even considered Logan to have changed. True. I think this is a very good take from Jabri. I think that's a very good take from Jabri. Also, controversial opinion, but I think Big Mike. I will, I will stand by Big Mike. Good guy overall. Love him. I think he's a great guy, actually. Fuck it. Not even good guy. I'll take it there. Great guy. Okay? Big M. You can say riding all you want. Listen, man. When you're a motherfucker with, like, a crippling opioid addiction who's, like, been to fucking jail and shit, and, and you're now at this position that you're at, no shot. He's a good guy. Literal great guy. I'll, I'll glaze him. I'm sorry. You're like, you know, 16 years old, never seen any kind of controversy in your fucking life, talking shit about a dude who's like recovered um, from, you know, heroin addiction and all kinds of different fucking issues. No shot. Dick riding is insane. No, I, I will. I, I, I have so much respect for him. I'm, I'm really glad. I'll say this much. I'm really glad that he's friends with Jeff because if he wasn't friends with Jeff, I would have never even considered him as like, uh, as, as anyone, but like a fucking douchebag. Didn't know anything about him. Everything I saw of him, I thought like he's probably a douchebag. Logan Paul's bestie, no shot. But then because he was, you respect anyone who goes to the gym, dude, he doesn't even go to the gym that much. He goes to the gym now. Okay. Shut up. Jeff Woodek, Jeff Woodek, love Jeff. Okay. Love Jeff. Great dude. I think he's a good guy as well. Another guy that like looks like a douchebag, but is actually a great guy. Very funny too. Okay. Jeff is uh, very good friends with, very good friends with, uh, with, with Big Mike. If you want to know, if you want to know what uh, a Big Mike is like in real life, if you, if you thought he was a fucking douchebag, just like I did, watch the Fear and podcast that we did with him. And I think you will develop a, a very, uh, you will find a, a newfound appreciation for him. I mean, ironic because like literally one of the parts is where, where is it? Big Mike's Turkish hair plugs is big. Mike, a douchebag is like literally part of the conversation. Yeah. Great episode. One of the best ones we've ever done. Holy shit. I completely misjudged Mike. One of the best episodes hands down is so heartbreaking to hear all of their experiences with addiction. Yeah. He's, he's not a, did you think he was a douche before he came out of practice? No, 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 no. It was because of, I, I explain it in the podcast as well, but it was because of his relationship with Jeff that made me reconsider whether or not he was actually a fucking douchebag. Um, and then when I, when I had him on the podcast, I was like, oh yeah, he's actually a great dude. Like he's a well-intentioned person. Or read his book is genuinely really fucking good called The Fifth Vital. Yeah, uh, about his story about recovering from addiction. Uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. He also has never done any of the crypto and scammy shit for the record. I mostly thought it was crypto and scammy shit. No, he's never done any of that. So also remember that. Like a lot of why, a lot of why people think that Big Mike's a douchebag is because of uh, his friendship with Logan Paul. That's it. He definitely was involved? No, I don't think he was. What do you mean? He seems cool. Why does chat get bent when he likes certain people? Um, why does chat like when I like certain people? Because this is Twitter. Like, my chat is the most Twitter-ass fucking chat on the planet. And that's it. It, it, it. Literally, it's just like a manifestation of like the most annoying fucking aspects of Twitter every day as I like whip the chat and it's uncharitability all day, every day, non-fucking-stop. That's it. It's just, like, people rad-libbing because they can't, like, stop being rad-libs, even at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. You know what I mean? 
People also literally think like everyone has to be like fucking the second coming of Mao. Also, a lot of people just like they make up their minds and then uh, and then fill the blanks afterwards. And they've made up their minds about them. So they fill they're filling the blanks. They'll look for like anything and everything. Um, they will look to fill the blanks with anything and everything, even if it's like minor, you know what I mean? Like a, a defensible thing or, uh, you know, cause like everyone is fucked up. Everyone has done something that's fucked up. You know what I mean? Everyone. I don't care who you like. I just don't think Mike is a good guy. Okay. Well, there you go. If you don't want to, then it's fine. Um, but regardless, give it a shot. Give the podcast episode a shot and you're Attitude might change. Mine certainly did. Was he the one who threatened Kavizilo over the phone? No, he was not. Uh, that his Logan Paul's manager. But again, Wire Chatter centering themselves in this combo because good guy, fuck off. Dude, listen, man. Someone who has literally fucking recovered from like literal serious, severe opioid addictions uh, and, and, uh, and like, you know, went to jail and shit. Like, I'm sorry. A lot of you motherfuckers are in the chat, either anonymous. So we have no way of like assessing what your background is or two, lived a very privileged and sheltered life. When I see someone like that, when I see someone like that, okay. When I see someone like that, I'm going to have a very different perspective. Okay. Everything I believe in, it's like literally in action. P things I believe in, in general, about the world, about what I preach, as far as like rehabilitation and shit like that, I am, you know, I I'm, I'm practicing what I unironically uh, talk about. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, I believe you've actually met the guy. Yeah. Being a recovering addict does not make you a good guy. I never just said that. I just said that overcoming uh, immense... Uh, trials and tribulations such as recovering from a heroin addiction does give you at least a little bit of fucking leeway with someone like myself. Um, again, I don't want to hear about this from uh, little shitters in the fucking chat whose largest, whose largest trial that they've overcome is the top of the hour ad break. Okay. By subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch prime, you overcome the top of the hour ad break and you think this is the this is it. This is my daily trial. You know, I did it. And some of you get gifted a sub anyway. Okay? You're such a hypocrite. Wait, 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 wait. I want to see. I want to see what he said. I want to see what he said. Just because he did drugs and recovered doesn't make him a good person. Lamau, you're such a hypocrite. No, you didn't. You didn't do anything. You ignored it. Please, I want to hear why he's a bad guy from Mayo Aid. Also, shut the fuck up. Chatter's talking like Mike came to their fucking house and killed them. He advertised Ink Doink. Defend out, please. No, indefensible. I didn't know that. That's fucked up. Still a good guy. What do I always say? Sometimes good people do bad things. Okay. Addressed it. Are we happy? Moving on. He didn't really, though. Doesn't matter. Ethan asked him about Ink Doink. What did he say? Why does Chat want him to be such a bad guy? Chat not only wants him to be a bad guy, Chat is now going to go through the phase that everybody does, okay? They want to go through the, they're going through the phase of, uh, of what everyone does, which is not only do I have this bias, but I'm going to try and justify it now by taking like the least charitable physical possible uh, opinion, okay? You can't. I think it's fair to be skeptical and not take your uh, word at face value. Chad is, yeah, Chad is probably scrubbing his Twitter right now to, like, look for a dumb shit that he said. Never said he's a super smart guy. Thank God Mike never came on stream. You motherfuckers are losers. Oh, yeah, 100%. It, yeah, you're right. It's not necessarily that, like, they want him to be a bad guy. I think it's because they want to be right. Whoever said that in the chat, you're right. Um, I will never, I will never be fucking this aggro towards someone who is uh, recovered, who is someone who is, like, Keg W got him. Oh, fuck yourself. Okay, now you're banned. Once again, this is why no one likes this community. The irony is that even this community doesn't like itself. 
The most shit Twitter takes is just one negative opinion they have on a person and then uh, warp their perception of that person that they're just as bad as Nazis. It's so fucking annoying. Yeah. It's, it's, so twi it's Twitter shit. Like I said, that's how it is. It sucks. But listen, there is a different way. Okay? There is a different way. There is a different way. You can get better. Okay? You can rehabilitate your fucking attitude. Okay? You can. Sometimes we are trapped in a cage by our uh, unfair perceptions of the world because we are sheltered. You get it? We have a false sense of who people are supposed to be like. Maybe even you look to someone like myself and you say, everyone's supposed to be like that. That's my unproblematic content creator. You know what I mean? And I think that despite all the fucking hate that I receive... I think I conduct myself in a way that is as moral as I physically can be, okay? And even then, I still fuck up. Even then, I say some shit when I get angry, okay? Don't use the word sheltered, man. It's got nothing to do with it. Otherwise, you're right. No, I think it is. It is a... This is the perception of... of uh, this is the perception, this unfair categorization of human beings that only sheltered people can have. Yeah, it's a, it's it, it's coming from a place of not having enough uh, life experience. Does that make sense? And you hopefully should have the same uh, attitude towards everyone that you uh, wished, or the same charitability towards others that you wish one day people will cast that same kind of judgment on you. At all. Back in the day, the idea was just Let's continue. flex, show people how great I am, be a, a cocky, confident, arrogant, um, loud, boisterous prick, and draw attention. It was like shock value was the, the, the way to break into the homes of millions of people through the internet. You were a cartoon character at one point. Would you say that? Uh, yeah, for sure. B bro, both Jake and I were. There's not... Are you kidding me? There's no no such thing as a more quintessential villain than the fucking 2017 Paul brothers. Like, what what were we doing? I was convinced for a little while that the maturity Logan seemed to display during these episodes might be here to stay. Maybe he had truly reflected enough on his years of constant insanity to have become a better person looking to make an actual positive impact on the massive community he cultivated. Wait, wait, what? Oh, what, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what, what? Yeah. I guess, I guess. I was horribly mistaken. At the end of the day, this is a fraudulent. This is why. This is why it's so fucking like insane to me because Jabri is totally correct here. He looked like he was making a legitimate change in his life. That was obviously his output, and then he saw an opportunity to fucking hit the bag, and he was just like, "Oh, perfect. Let's go. Let's do it." I'm practice, all right, in a lot of cases to be pushing onto your fan base. A lot of these law enforcement agencies should look at Logan Paul. See, at the end of the day, behind Which, all by the way, they are looking at Jake Paul for the record. The smoke and mirrors of impulsive, Logan was still quietly creeping back into his old ways, unbeknownst to most of the general public. And it happened kind of slowly, too. For example, when he began regularly opening wildly expensive Pokemon cards on stream, the dude he hired to be his Pokemon card dealer, <laughs> collectibles guru, had a pretty known reputation of being a shady figure in the Pokemon community. Now, I don't know anything about the Pokemon community, but considering nobody seems to really revere him as a qualified source of information and the fact that he admitted to pocketing millions of dollars from Logan's now infamous crypto zoo scam in 2022, I wouldn't be so quick to trust him. But Logan did, which should have been setting off some alarm bells, especially by the time he began shilling crypto coins in 2021. And as we know from literally countless examples, when the word celebrity is used in the same sentence as cryptocurrency, it's never a good thing. Thanks to the severe lack of regulation within the crypto space, countless influencers have been able to intentionally mislead and steal money from their fans with blatant pump and dump schemes. One of the most popular ways to do that is by promoting the hell out of a shit coin, a cryptocurrency with no utilization whatsoever, to drive up the value. Once the value goes up, the influencer can sell their share of their tokens for a huge profit and leave their fans holding the bag. It's a tale as old as time and should certainly be investigated 
investigated by the SEC. But in the meantime, in March 2022, crypto scam investigator Zach XBT published a Twitter thread with evidence of Logan's alleged involvement in a multitude of crypto pump and dump schemes beginning in May 2021. By tracking his publicly available Web3 activity, Zach was able to deduce that Logan promoted a coin by the name of Elongate to his private club of Maverick members. So in other words, his most devoted fans who actually pay for a closer connection to Logan. It's all good. Elongate made me rich. Elongate, Elon Gate, baby, let's go. <laughs> Elongate token. <laughs> After hyping up the Elon coin in a video leaked on May 10th, Logan allegedly dumped his shares on May 17th, walking away with a $112,000 payday before it crashed. That's sort of up, but he'd do it again and again when he plugged another crypto coin immediately after, this time on his public Twitter page. Not financial advice. <laughs> God, I'm gonna get violent. According to the screenshots, Logan bought the coin right before his tweet went out and sold it 12 hours later for a net profit of $116,000. You can kind of see a trend here. The Twitter page for Like, dude, dude, that's the wildest part about that is just like fucking over your fan base for $116,000, which is a lot of money, right? For one day's work, but nothing for Logan Paul. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's like a lot of money for every single chatter here. But that is not anything for Logan Paul. <coughs> it's pure greed. You're fucking, like, wh why are you doing that? Just to do it? Like, just to fuck your fans? Like, I don't understand. 750K for 10 minutes of video, and he goes for 116K in coin. Straight up doing federal crimes for a 0.1% increase in wealth. Yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. For this particular coin, it hasn't been active for over a year. <laughs> Is it the anti-Mr. Beast, me Beast method? Yeah, Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's just like... It's just like, uh, today I scammed, uh, <laughs> today I scammed all my fans out of a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> So he's clearly not doing it for anything other than money. If this was really a project he believed in, he wouldn't have sold 12 hours after telling us he believed in it. Then, by the time Logan's You want to know why he did that, by the way, for people saying, why would you fuck your fans, which are the reason you have money? Because he can. Because he can get away with it. That's it. As simple as that. I think, like, he just doesn't care. And it hasn't ruined his career, so it doesn't matter. He's, like, signed with the fucking WWE. He does a lot of shit that, that actually could basically change his reputation entirely. Okay? Like, completely. And yet, he just doesn't... Like, he does the shit that is actually good, okay? And then he has to literally... Are scams not considered career-ruining? No, man, not in America, not in 2023. In general, like, it's just not. Clearly. The crap of a fight with Floyd Mayweather rolled around that summer, Logan was paid in free crypto tokens by the company Emacs, which he then turned around and sold for an easy $70,000. It's worth noting here that, of course, Emacs is its own scam that's been involved in two lawsuits to date, so no idea how they even became a sponsor, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> yes. Mr. Beast does it for clout, so Logan's who's really worse, Logan, by a lot, scam, yeah. Dink -doink, which I've actually talked about on the channel before, but in light of what's happened since, it's wild that he ever got away with it. To further avoid accountability, he tried to say the Dink Doink mascot was the one who invented the coin. As if that makes any f***ing sense. In no surprise to anyone, despite all of Logan's forced promo for this thing, Dink Doink fell flat on its face. The Twitter page hasn't been active for a year, and the domain name is currently up for grabs. Gee, Wait it a would minute. really suck if someone bought it and uploaded this photo to it. God, I, I would really hate that. The most egregious part of all of this was that we had to suffer through these painfully unfunny skits that half-assedly ripped off South Park for some reason. Dink Doink, you're my favorite coin. Want you oh, it's not. He didn't face. do it. Take a doink. I thought he actually did it. He didn't do it. Got my chest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. That whole time felt like a fever dream. But little did we know then that Dink Doink was only setting the stage for a more sinister grift that stole millions of dollars from hardworking investors who made the fatal error of trusting Logan Paul. He's like, I actually do have a project. Excited to announce it. It's called CryptoZoo. It's a fun game. They called it a fun game that earns you money. They're going to sell you these two things. Eggs is NFT. And then there's a coin aspect to it. The eggs will then hatch into animals that will earn passive zoo tokens. Does that make sense? 
No. Immediately following the backlash from Dink Doink, Logan bizarrely decided to fling himself into a new project that for sure this time wouldn't be a scam like all the other ones. Instead of a sh coin, Logan was going to try his hand at NFTs, an NFT game to be exact. And just in case you thought this was just like any other NFT pyramid scheme where you throw your hard-earned money into a void in exchange for a shitty JPEG of a cartoon lion, Logan assured on multiple occasions that this was something different different. Doug, I'm not the fucking bad guy here. Yeah, yeah. There's some actual fuckers. Yeah, here. yeah. And I'm, it's not me. Like, I'm here to build, to mm -hmm. be an honest builder. Logan mm -hmm. cares extremely deeply about his audience, loves his audience, loves his brand, <laughs> doesn't have this to- is, This is the most irredeemable part of Mike, okay? Uh, which I will admit. That's it. There's like, there's no- this is it. This is the reason why I thought it was a douchebag. I didn't even watch this video, but like that's literally why he rides him so hard. Scam to make money. Which uh, is kind of understandable. I think like Logan Paul dramatically changed his life. You know what I mean? Guilty by association is why people hate him. I mean, guilt by association, but also he does ride for him. I know what I'm building. I know I have a good heart. I know where my head's at. I know I've fucked up a lot. Also, remember, that's not before the scam. That's after the scam, for the record. So it's not like he's like participating in a... Um, he's not participating in like a cover up or anything. He's just, you know, he's being a meat rider, which he is. He is a meat rider for Logan for sure. But I've learned from all of it. Mm. Ideally, you would buy their in-game cryptocurrency, Zoo. They could be used to purchase NFT eggs, which you could then trade or hatch into animals to be bred with other animals to create your own god-awful abominations. So you could breed a panda with an elephant to form a panda elephant hybrid. Exciting. But the rarer an animal is, the more Zoo tokens it's worth, and ultimately the more you can sell it for in the end. The idea is that you should be able to make money off these stupid images. One of the major polls was that CryptoZoo came complete with its own set of original handmade artwork. If one Google image reverse search didn't reveal that to be absolute bullshit too. We handmade art for the past six months, bro. Approval, very specific notes, 10 different artists making art for our project. A development team that has to be wizards. See, because Logan assumes everyone around him is an idiot, guess he thought he could mash together already existing Adobe stock photos and pass them off as original work without people knowing? It's a weird thing to lie about, but do you am I to expect anything from this guy? If repurposing stock photos was the worst part of this entire project, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. But wouldn't you believe it? CryptoZoo, the brand new trailblazing NFT project that Logan promised you could make money from, doesn't work. Never has, probably never well. Very this shocking. This damning discovery was of course made by the SEC of YouTube, CoffeeZilla, who <laughs> spent over a year meticulously picking apart Logan's hilariously convoluted scheme, only to expose it to the world in late 2022 through a three-part series garnering nearly 20 million there are, they're just, they aren't being just Twitter idiots. Even if Logan Paul made Mike, he still supported and justified a scam. Mike regressed that a little bit. He said that on H3, but he still wrote a scammer and people and hold that against them yeah fucking kill them then dude i don't give a shit you guys are fucking annoying and you would not behave this way in the fucking real world that's the point that i'm making this is why i say you're sheltered okay like that's that's my point you're making my point right now trying to re-justify it over and over again is not going to change my perception of not only mike which you know whatever you don't like him who gives a shit but like it's not going to change the way that i fucking experience the world and what I want to get people to behave like, okay? That's it. Like, go outside, touch fucking grass, think about the, the uh, ethical considerations that you lend to members of your family and members that you meet on a daily basis, member, people that you think in the real world are like good people overall. It is never going to be the same metric that you apply to random dumbasses that you see on the fucking internet. That is actually my point, Okay? Do you, do you get it? That's it. You are behaving in the incredibly draconian American fucking mentality, the brain rot that is also part of the reason why our carceral state is in, in, always justified. Is always justified. Like, you make things that are totally redeemable out to be irredeemable. Why? Because you started off with the same biased preconceived notions that I did as well. It, and it sucks. You know, it's just, it is what it is. It's, it's like, it's very weird. It's a very weird attitude to have.
but it is one of the most important parts of, of, you know, having a compassionate approach to others. Does that make sense? Okay, we get it. You like a scammer, move on. No one wants to kill or arrest him, but he's still not a good person. Like, this is what I mean. You're so, you're, I, I don't give a fuck whether you like Mike or not, okay? I just want to make one thing clear. I don't like you because I don't like your attitude. That's what it is. You're so smarmy and so annoying and, surprisingly, sanctimonious. You know what I mean? You and others that behave like this make it feel like the left is completely unapproachable because we are so hopped up on our own fucking farts, like, all the time. You know what I mean? And guess what? Much like Ron the Stinky, those farts are stinky as fuck to the general population. Okay? It's really, really annoying. It, it is. You make this... You make this project of trying to make leftist politics, progressive politics more palatable, infinitely more unapproachable by behaving this way. You know what I mean? It, it just sucks. And I hope you can change. Just like... People can understand. What? Hassan, you didn't get her opinion when forming your opinion about him? Yeah, I didn't. Which was good. I'm glad that I didn't. The fuck? Guys, you don't understand. He overcame drugs now, so he's a good person. Like, your malignant narcissism is correct. That is what you're expressing here, and nothing more. I mean, I think that chatter was joking, but this one is not. Very frustrating. We're not even talking about... We're not even talking about Mike at this point. We're talking about a fucking attitude shift that needs to happen in pretty much every community, but especially this one. Okay? Stop. And this is, for the record, not even defending Logan Paul, who has done a fuckload of indefensible shit. Okay? It's just odd. I don't know. I wish, I wish people would be, like, a little less annoying, you know? Just, just a little bit. Just take a breather and be like, is it normal to fucking despise this person to the degree that I despise them? Does that make sense? Just like, just take a step back. Be like, is it, is it normal? Or is it coming from a different place? Like my anger, is it justified in a vacuum? Or am I just like lashing out at everyone that I see is, that is behaving in an immoral way? Because in a lot of instances, I think, I think in a lot of instances, the way we behave, especially under the guise of anonymity, especially online, especially in a community like this one, is always is 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 always so so smarmy, you know, so scoldy. Million collective views and some embarrassing responses from Logan, which we'll get into in a bit. Coffee's investigation highlighted CryptoZoo's disappointing launch day, which resulted in people who paid with Ethereum unable to even open the eggs they had already purchased. See, despite over $2.4 million worth of CryptoZoo eggs being sold on the first day Logan announced what they were working on, people couldn't actually play the game when it finally launched. They couldn't access it, making the value of Zoo plummet within 24 hours of going live. This obviously raised questions from people who sank tens, if not hundreds of thousands into the project they were told would make them money. I'm excited to launch, uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again, you keep using a word there, game. You're not using like a project. Society's so being cured one stream at a time? I've it's never good. said that. It's a fun, it's a really fun, Game that makes you money. Game that makes you money. Makes you money. Makes you money. Makes you, makes money. you money. But instead of Logan or anyone addressing what was going on, they were all silent. Logan quit promoting it and never commented on it again. Instead, he moved on to another NFT project. I came up with an idea. 99 originals. It'll be 99 photos that I take every day over the course of 99 days. An artistic journey. Actual art. I can't stop thinking. It's the only thing I care Each about. Each picture is an NFT. It all ties to my entire life. Like, what happened to CryptoZoo, Logan? Logan, what happened? Come on. I'll tell you about this project when uh, we get closer to launch. Yeah, yeah. This project of mine is going is, to be... Is that the thing with the egg? The, like the zoo? No, 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 no. Okay, this, one, gonna, this one's gonna be, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the crazy we've ever done. I guess Logan was ultimately hoping people would just forget the massive investments they made. But I mean, Coffee <laughs> talked to these people and it's he not He rides like him so hard. Change. I lost around $50,000 in crypto. 
They lost forty thousand dollars. I lost around fifteen thousand US dollars. I lost twenty-five thousand dollars. One hundred twenty thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars Australian, which is half a million in crypto zoo. Shut up! Right. Yeah, 500k. Logan had some explaining to do, along with the rest of his team, who consisted of Logan's manager, Pokemon boy from earlier, and a pathological liar who embellished his entire resume, lying that he once helped Man, me. Man, this was a this was a crazy fucking saga. Coffeezilla really fucking ripped him. Fell, went to MIT, worked for the government, and was an orphan. Weird, weird stuff to lie about. And even weirder for Logan's manager to still hire him, despite being warned of his dubious background. I confronted him about some of Eddie's lies, including how he didn't work for the NFL. Jeff told me he doesn't know much about the NFL, but he knows about the business world. And so Jeff and Logan were going to continue working with him. And as Coffee spoke to more people involved with the project, things began to look even more concerning. I'd suggest you watch his full series since it goes way more in depth than what we'll be covering today. I'm sorry, bro. 500k loss with crypto scheme is economic Darwinism at that point. Yeah, there's like, there's got to be a cutoff. You know what I mean? Like, it's a weird thing because like you're still scamming people. So you're still worse than the other guys. But like they're like, they're all literally fucking it's oh my God. I just. Ay, 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 ay. Today, but to summarize, Coffee was eventually given leaked screenshots of Logan and friends organizing CryptoZoo from the start. These guys don't deserve to be scammed. They're vulnerable people who believe the pathological liar. No, chat's not all that ruthless when they fucking say that, like, no, they don't deserve to get scammed, but, like, they are definitely. Come on, man. No, nah, they're fine. They buy gas station chips. Like, come on, brother. Like, this is, this is one of the. It's still inappropriate. It still should be illegal. But you got to realize that, like, at a certain point, a lot of these guys think that they're going to be giving the bag to someone else, and then they end up being the bag holder themselves. That still doesn't mean, like, they don't have to be perfect victims, right? But, like, they are dumb as fuck still. And if you read I, I, like, I'm still going to make fun of them. You know what I mean? these messages it's blatantly clear that they didn't care about anything other than making themselves richer we already knew that was the case logan and his manager actually held on to their coins but collectibles guru and the pathological liar we mentioned earlier made millions at the expense of the people logan promised would be able to play the game uh they couldn't and some got entirely fleeced logan has since promised to refund these victims as a part of a three-step plan he announced after coffee's video which is good if it happens but it's also important to note that Logan would 100% not have done any of that had he not been criticized relentlessly by multiple huge personalities. And we know this because of Logan's first horrific response to coffee, where he apologizes for nothing and attempts to absolve himself completely of any wrongdoing without actually providing any counter arguments to coffee's points. Like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. While your work used to be impartial, your addiction to clicks has clouded your Oh my god, that was so bad. With very real repercussions. Coffee, Ooh, that's a bold statement. Do you have anything to back that up, Logan? Spoiler alert, no. Logan was more interested in digging himself into an increasingly deeper hole. For example, when Coffee interviewed CryptoZoo developer Zach Kelling, who claimed to have not been paid for his work, Logan responded with, oh, that guy? Yeah, he's actually a criminal. And so is this guy. Basically, I hired a bunch of criminals to make this prized game I supposedly care a lot about. He spent time in prison for multiple felonies who has turned out to be a professional con man fooled billionaires the mormon church the owner of the new york yankees and now me which really isn't the greatest defense in the world if you're saying these people can't be trusted why did you hire them did you vet them before I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process. Oh, right, yeah, that was somebody else's job, not you. Just because there are multiple guilty parties here, it doesn't make Logan innocent, who was rightfully called out for overseeing such a disastrous I project. Uh, this saga was so funny. To fix, I can't get over it. It's Everybody so good. has a big part and a massive, massive cross to bear. Each one of them scammed the project in their own way. It was his job to check the team to make sure that everyone is working together to make sure that he is giving the funds of the people that put it into his project under his name to people that he actually trusts if the team failed to perform that's 
Logan Paul to blame. Remember, it's only after he'd been called out that he claimed to be working on bringing the game back to life. A year of radio silence followed by sloppy, angry responses due to a massively publicized series of exposés doesn't make it seem like you're acting out of the goodness of your heart. It's a PR move. You know you're a bad scammer when even Andrew Tate is dunking on you. So I what is your view on that whole crypto zoo situation? Because Coffee Zilla is doing an investigation at the moment and it is quite gripping, isn't it? The dude's it? a clown. The dude's a, he's a person who doesn't care about his fans. He just wants to make as much money as possible off the back of people who watch him. Logan's obviously a brokey. Didn't you, didn't you do that? You know, aside from the sex trafficking, allegedly, like one of the more redeemable mass scams that you engaged in was that, like that was like the lowest offense, which is by the way, for the record, still pretty fucked up, like still very, very, very fucked up, but you know, in comparison to how fucked up the other shit that he did, it comes across like almost, uh, you know, a low level offense. Not very top G of you. Logan then decided to invite Coffee onto Impulsive to hash things out in person, though he didn't include how Coffee had already invited him onto his show. It's like a little nap. It's like a little fucking annoying nap. It bothers me. I wonder why the dude doesn't want to fly out there, Logan. Logan even threatened legal action before realizing there was no other route to take other than to make a weak apology over on a second channel and promise to correct the mistakes he made. While I still hope he follows through on this, it's been about two months at the time of me recording this, and he still has yet to pay anyone back, to my knowledge. It's ultimately important to remember this was something he really tried to get away with. For over a year, he thought he could just sweep it under the rug and then make coffee look like the bad actor, when in reality, the facts were always against him because he can't set his greed aside to not scam his fans for- That actually, I think, honestly comes from him just like having yes men, Mike included, let's be real, even though I love Mike, uh, in his like immediate circle, because like he literally put that video out there thinking that it was a dunk, which was so wild. Like, he thought, like, he had to delete that, but, like, that was so embarrassing that he thought that that was a fucking dunk. Like, he was like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking destroy CoffeeZilla. For two seconds. I don't even really know why he did this. The guy is already making tens, if not hundreds of millions from other endeavors. It blows my mind to think he needs to resort to petty crypto scams to pay the bills, but I think it's mostly a testament to the person Logan is and has always been. But what's the goal? I mean, bro. Jeff told Ethan he saw that vid before and told Logan it was perfect. Oh, God. That's not good. Uh, one word answer. Money is a scoreboard. It's a game to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where do you rank on that scoreboard? Mm -hmm. You know? How many, how many billionaires... How many self-made billionaires are there under 30? It can't be f more than yeah. 10. Yeah. Think so. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool to me. How many kids will that inspire? Now, when it comes to online crypto scams, the argument gets made that the full blame falls on those who were naive enough to invest. And while careful consideration and precaution should be taken before ever throwing your money at something influencer backed, I don't particularly blame the fans, at least in the case of Logan Paul. It's not like he was selling, I don't know, MILF token. This was supposed to be far different than the other notorious crypto scams of the past. He was very clear about making that distinction. Even when it became apparent the project wasn't working, he still refused to do anything to make things better. He offered no transparency, effectively stringing his investors along with vague promises as he prepared for his next grift. If you ask me, Logan has not changed much since 2017. All he's really done is rebrand himself into a more trustworthy figure on the surface, only to betray that trust in a slimy attempt to line his pockets, even when it's at the expense of his biggest supporters. He doesn't care about you. Yeah, if he didn't do the sequence of crypto scams, notice like literally after the cutoff where he, where Jobry talks about his like reputation rehab. If he hadn't done that, if he just did like the wrestling and the boxing and shit, he has prime now. KSI rehabbed him big time too. Like a lot more people, I think, ultimately would 
would be we would be forgiving is like at the end of the day he's just a fucking content creator you know what i mean it's what you do with your output that matters and his output is like literally just is that what would have been fine but my man is just addicted dude he's addicted to scamming that's hot, that's hot. well nev Smash. 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 Nice. No questions for him. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Uh, Amurant, it's Ramadan. What are you doing? Amurant, it's Ramadan. What are you doing? Amurant, Allah. Uruch Gigi. Allah, gitti. Gitti Uruch. Someone in the just said, wait a minute. I recognize those people. Yeah, these are like some of the fucking top porn stars on the planet, dude. You got... The Ohio man is the one thing the Florida man fears. The Ohio man excels. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah have mercy on her soul. <laughs> Yeah, as friend of the show, Eva Elfie. Uh, that's uh, Lena the Plug, Adam uh, 20, whatever the fuck's uh, wife, I think. Don't know who the rest of them are. <laughs> Angela like White. Uh, oh, yeah. Whatever, at this Incredible. point with him. <laughs> uh, I can't see this personality. He looks like a, he looks like. Cool hair. Is like, like, hot. Oh, that's hot. President porn academic. To be fair, like I I've fallen off a little bit because I didn't even know Angela White, and I know that she's like super famous. I just don't really. All right, let's continue. He doesn't even really care about the hate he gets, so long as enough of his core audience is still there to manipulate. Now, I'm a proponent of second chances. The occasional fuck up is normal and understandable, so long as you use it as an opportunity to reflect and grow. Learning from your past is fine, it's part of being a human. But Logan threw all of that perceived growth out the window this past year. Just for a couple dollars he would have already had if he had never- The funniest part is he didn't even get to make money. Like, he got scammed because of the other scammers that he brought on board that rug-pulled him before he could rug-pull others, which makes it even more hilarious. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't even make money off of it, which makes it even funnier. Like, he lost money because he got scammed because he brought on other scammers to do the scam with, and then they scammed him done any of this. It's such a bizarre move, I just don't get it. He isn't worthy of your time, your trust, certainly not your money, and after so many failed chances to redeem himself, I wouldn't blame you if he wasn't worthy of your forgiveness. But some of the diss tracks still bang. Friend of the show, Jobbery with an absolute banger, folks.